Talks between the Syrian government and external opposition in Geneva seem to be finally bringing about some results. The sides have reached an agreement that will let humanitarian aid enter the besieged city of Alms and allow women and children to leave its war-hit areas. Now, meanwhile, in Syria's other embattled city, Aleppo, people are returning to their homes after government forces recaptured large parts of the town from militants. RT's Maria Fanoshna reports on the civilian struggle to bring their life back to normal. We land at Aleppo International Airport on what is believed to be the first civil airplane to touch down here in the last year. It's a special government flight, but authorities say regular ones are due to start in a month's time. This flight means the return of life to this airport and this area. This northern Syrian region has seen the most violent clashes during the almost three-year-long conflict, leaving death and devastation behind. It used to be a four billion dollar factory where 2,000 people were working. Now you can see nothing is left, everything is destroyed. But while that is a common picture here, it seems that hope for peace is slowly coming back. This village outside Aleppo has just come back under government control. Out of 14,000 residents who fled it after the rebels' attack, one third, the government says, is now back to discover their houses either destroyed or looted. It all depends on how lucky you are. Our home was almost intact, but they stole everything. This pregnant woman says she and her husband have been waiting for this baby for 12 years, and they're happy to finally have it now. Our home was destroyed. We now have nothing. But God gave us a baby, and that will give us power to build everything from scratch. We are ready. We meet more and more residents here, sharing this optimism. How is life? Life is good, thanks God. Families returned with their kids. Mohammed, 12 years old, couldn't go to school for months, but he still thinks of his school days. I have three friends, Ali Muhammad and Hamuri. They are my cousins. While we are talking, humanitarian aid arrived. People are in desperate need of simply everything, and most importantly, security. What we do now is we get locals involved in patrolling, in helping the army secure the area and protecting the village, and we call on all others to come back soon. We leave the village to drive to the city. What used to take some 15 minutes by highway takes an hour today. Roads are not yet safe enough. But parts of Aleppo look secure, at least at first glance. We are a little bit surprised to see what used to be Syria's biggest business center still so vibrant and actually safe. We even took our flag jackets with us, expecting to see clashes in the middle of a completely destroyed city. But don't be mistaken, this is the western part of the city. More to the east, you will see a completely different picture. Moderate free Syrian army factions fighting radical al-Qaeda affiliated groups there for control, with the government forces trying to fight them both. But militants still control half of the city and a big part of northern Syria, remaining the biggest challenge to the ceasefire plan pushed forward by Syrian and Russian foreign ministers. We Syrians are ready to reconcile with each other, and Aleppo is a good place to start with, so we can give an example to other regions. But these guys, from the Nusra Front, from Al-Qaeda, they don't know what they want, but it's certainly not peace. But while this force is large enough to threaten a carefully forged peace to this war-torn country, residents say they are not ready to give up their fight for their country to be at peace. Marif Noshnati from Syria.